Good Wednesday morning, Romans chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They're Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. Why did Paul have such a deep desire for the salvation of those who persecuted him? At the point in which Paul was writing this letter, persecution was primarily imposed upon Christians by Jews. Paul expressed the sincere anguish he felt for his own kinsmen that they would reject their Messiah and hate his gospel message. Paul was reassuring the Christians that the tribulations they faced, they were not a sign that they were wrong to put their faith in Christ, but in fact, it was a sign that the love of Christ was stronger than anything the enemy could throw at them. One of the greatest sources of anger among the Jews toward Christians was the idea that the law could not save them, but only the work of Christ in keeping the law on their behalf. The idea that they would be baptized along with Gentiles and receive the same inheritance was unthinkable. You know, even today there are people who treat the gospel going out to Gentiles like myself as God's plan B because Jesus was rejected by Jews. Paul, however, has been clearly saying, all believers, whether Jew or Gentile, were predestined, called, justified, glorified by the work of God alone. This week, our church is performing a melodrama. It's a sensational, dramatic piece with exaggerated characters and exciting events intended to appeal to the emotions. <laughs> Was Paul being melodramatic when he said he wished that he could be accursed and cut off from Christ if it meant that his kinsmen would come to faith in him? Personally, I think Paul's emotion was genuine. I can't tell you the number of times I wish I could have suffered in the place of parishioners that I saw missing God. Understand Paul's statement as a deep expression of the anguish he felt over his people who rejected their Messiah. He remembers all too well the time when he was among them, persecuting Christians himself before he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. <sighs> they were willing to listen to him when he was persecuting the church. He wished with every fiber of his being that they would listen to him now as he declared to them the truth. The great stumbling block for many of the Jews was that Christ was crucified and being hung on a tree was clearly stated as being cursed by God in Deuteronomy chapter 21. And while it is true, Jesus was cursed and placed on a tree. The curse he bore, it was yours and mine. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for initiating a redemptive plan for all people after Adam and Eve rebelled against you in the garden. How wonderful it is that Christ reigns with you, Father God, on high after bearing our curse on the tree. May we, like Paul, feel such a burden for lost souls that we will declare the truth of Christ no matter the cost. Lord, I love you and I praise you for you are so very good to me. Be glorified in me and through me, I pray in your holy name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.